Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is part four of my five part lever lock picking series where we talk about all the techniques and tools and types of lever locks. Uh, previous videos have included uh, one which looks at the types of lever locks and all the terminology we use uh, when we're describing the insides of them. We have one on lever padlock picking, we have one on non curtained lever locks, and then this is about curtained lever locks. So please do look at the previous videos in this series. It'll certainly help when you're watching this one. So what do we mean by curtained and non-curtained? Well, briefly, if you look at a lock like this, you'll see that this is what we call a non-curtained lever lock. When I put the key in and it acts on the bolt, what's happening is the key itself is pulling the bolt across. The key is acting on the talon on the bolt assembly, as well as lifting the levers to the correct height using the lever steps on the key, and you can see how it operates. That's all well and good, but because the insides of the lock are so exposed, it means that you can actually tension locks like this just by sticking in a, a wire, and you can see how I've got this wire in the bolt talon there, and I can get tension on the lever pack with the bolt stump acting on the gating here. Okay, so how do we get around that? Is there a security feature we can add to a lock? Yeah, there is, it's called the curtain. And what this does is it means that there isn't any talon necessarily, so to speak, in the lock. Instead, the curtain itself turns and acts a bit like a cam and interacts with the bolt assembly here instead. That means we can't just stick in a wire and we've got to have specialized tools to be able to turn the curtain to act on the bolt assembly and pull the bolt stump through the gating once the levers are lifted to the correct height by the key. So here we go. Let's pop the key in. I'm going to do it from the back. And you see that the curtain itself turns round and pulls the bolt assembly all the way through the gating in the levers once they're lifted to the correct height by the key. So how do we get tension on a lock like this? Well, really there are two main ways to do that. And that is either to buy a set of curtained lever tensioning tools like this. And these come in different gauges, the five and the seven gauge. And these diameters, these gauges, they really represent the two most common key thicknesses, if you will, that are around in the UK. And there we go. So you do need both because one won't tension the other and, the, uh, and, and it just means that you're going to be able to get into more locks. But these are expensive. These are, you know, well over hundred pounds for a pair with some wires and that becomes quite steep. So what else can you do? Well, consider the key itself is made of lever steps, that which lifts the levers to the correct heights, but also there is material there which turns the curtain. So not quite a bolt step as you'd have in a non-curtain lock. That means though that we can grind down the key, and here is exactly that, a key, which is ground down, and it's got just enough material that you're still able to turn the curtain, There you go, turn the curtain and enough room because I've ground the key to ooh, about a quarter to a third less material to put in a lever wire to lift those levers. How would you tension it? Well, it's unlikely to get enough tension using your fingertips. So a pair of pliers attached to the end here is one good way or you could make or buy your own tensioning rings just like this, which are some form of nut, in this case a nice knurled ring, 
and some form of screw in bar. What do we use these on? Well, we can actually use them on cut down keys. These tensioning rings and these keys and all the uh, lever wires you'll see me use in this video to pick the locks were made for me by Andy Mac Locksmith Tools, although you can buy or make these yourself. Um, so you can buy these from a number of different manufacturers or indeed make them yourself using a grinder and a bit of care and attention. You just need some keys which are five and seven gauge. So you need key blanks. Um, you can get these from just a bunch of spare keys that you get with a, a lever lock. Um, these ones actually have some little grub screws in to allow them to tension onto the curtain but as you can see you can just grind down a normal key to have the same exact effect. So here is one of these tension tools gripped into the tension wheel at the back. These will allow you to add good tension using your hands onto the curtain and you can see here just compared to the commercially available ones how realistically the functionality is pretty much the same. Let's pop one of these commercial ones into the lock and you'll see that they stop not at the key collar but at the thicker part of the tool it can turn the curtain and again if you look down there you can see that that is plenty of room to add a wire. So we talked about how we tension the bolt stump onto the lever pack so that we can bind those levers and then pick them. What do we need to pick those? Well we need lever picks, lever wires. Here are three lever wires designed for picking clockwise. And of course, they all come in their anti-clockwise variants to pick uh, lever locks either from the other side or where the lever pivots from a different side. Although, frankly, it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as it works in the lock. That being said, let's actually have a look at how we've gone from a wire, and this is 1.6mm music wire, to these curtained lever picks. And unlike for non-curtain locks, it does sort of matter what the shape is. You can't just put a, a, an L bend in, and there's a very good reason for that, which we'll come on to in a minute. But let, just look at these three. So this is a homemade lever wire out of the music wire, and this one works. But it's not very fancy. This one, which comes with a nice little screw and handle, is a beautifully polished uh, pick made well, custom made by Andy Mac Locksmith Tools, and you can see a huge difference there if you compared them. However, with a bit of care and attention, there's nothing stopping you from making this type of wire either. And then this is actually a very expensive commercially available wire, and it's a little bit different to both of the ones I've previously shown you, and I don't really think I could recommend you buying these wires at great expense, about five pounds per wire, uh, when you can quite easily make them yourself or buy them custom made by um, a bespoke manufacturer which just provides a better tool. When we compare all these though, you'll see that they have a small kink or a small dog leg in the wire. That's what they all have in common. And this is incredibly important for wires used for curtained lever locks. Why is that? Well, when you actually tension the curtain, you'll see that you need to have enough room to put your lever wire in. Now look a bit closer, you'll see that if you put the lever wire in, there is a little step there caused by the curtain itself. So, let's just grab any one of these at random put them in, turn the tension tool around, and you can see now, hopefully, that the shape, that dog leg, allows that tip to reach over the curtain. 
It also means that you can apply tension a lot further around because the pick tip isn't getting in the way. So how do we go about picking these? Well, you know what? Once you've sorted out the tensioning, you pick it pretty much the same as you would any other lever lock. You'd apply tension to the bolt mechanism. The bolt stump would press against the levers. They would bind in some form of order and you would pick the levers that bind to the correct height. You'll notice that this lock has some false notches in and those false notches do pose a bit of a problem and we do need to learn how to pick our way out of them. If you want to know a bit more about false notches or false gates on lever locks and how to uh, pick out of them, then please go see the previous video where I've explained that technique. In this one, we're just going to look at how we uh, use the right tension tool to pick those levers in turn and get an open. When approaching a lock like this for the first time, you wanna make sure that you have a range of lever wires of different lengths. This will allow you to choose the right wire for the right lock. And depending on which direction you're picking, either from the back or the front, you may want to also have some left and right handed levers to allow you to pick anti-clockwise or clockwise. We're picking from the front, so we need some levers which will pick clockwise. And you do need some different depths. The one which you need to go for really is the one which is about the depth of the keyway all the way up to the curtain. And that's usually about right. So just match up with the curtain. So something about this length is fine. You don't want something which is the full length of the keyway because by the time you get um, your tensioner in, it's going to be so low in the lock, you're gonna get caught up with all sorts of springs and, and bits and bobs inside and probably, yeah, just not, not good. So you don't want it too short because you want to be able to lift the levers to the highest height, but you don't want it to be too um, long either, which will just mean that you might struggle to even get onto the levers in the first place. So once you're able to get tension on one of these locks, either by using a commercial tension tool or indeed your cut down key tensioner, then you're ready to pick it. We've already chosen the correct wire and then what we need to do is insert that wire down the groove of the tensioner and then get it inside the lock at the same time. So the way we do that is we put the tension tip in, we put the lever wire down inside the lock and turn them both together and you'll see now that we've trapped the lever wire in against the tensioner and the keyway itself. We've got plenty of room to move it back and forth in the keyway and we get under the lever bellies to lift them. Just one thing is that this acrylic front's great at allowing you to see inside the lock as I pick it, but it does mean that the levers are compressed slightly more than if it had the metal front it originally came with on. That means that this doesn't pick very easily, uh, the levers are a bit sticky, and therefore it's not a real representation of picking, but the theory is still correct. And it's a compromise I'm taking because I want you to see inside as I do this. So what do we do? Well, we put tension on clockwise. And once I've got tension on, I can go through the lever pack and I can try to find a binding lever and pick it. So the tension tool is tensioning the curtain. The curtain's pulling the bolt stump into the lever pack. That binds one or more levers at a time. That's what we need to find. That's what we're lifting up. And that is how we will get this open. So let's try uh, two. Good, one, good, uh, lever three now, nice little click there, lever four, I've got to corkscrew under this one a little bit, maybe a little bit too much there, oh, lost a bit of uh, tension, let's try again, so two, Two, there we go, maybe a bit too high. Release the tension again. I think I overset that one. 
one, three, four, leave a five now, and we got an open, there we go. So that was either easier or harder than uh, it should be because of the acrylic front on this. However, I hope you can see that the theory of how you pick these is identical to standard lever locks, non-curtain lever locks. As a curtain lever lock, you just need to be able to get tension on it, have the right length of lever pick wire, and then you just go through the same process of finding the binding lever, lifting it up to the right height, and eventually once all those levers are picked to the right height, the gating aligns with the bolt stump, the bolt stump can go through the gating and you have that open. So there you are. Hopefully that's given you an insight into the uh, tools and techniques that you need to be able to pick open curtained lever locks just like this one. Please do go check out the previous videos in this series and upcoming next are some more specialized techniques in the fifth and final video which includes things like overlifting, pre-lifting and using tryout keys. Okay, I'll see you next time.